Hi, my name is Tom. I'm the developer of Beacon, and I'm going to show you how to use Beacon to customize your loot drops. First, you'll need to download Beacon from the website, beaconapp.cc. You will need a Mac or Windows computer for Beacon. There is no mobile, web, or Chromebook version of Beacon at the time this video was recorded. I have a brand new copy of Beacon installed here, and a brand new Xbox server with Nitrato that I'll use to demonstrate. This process will also work for PS4 and PC servers with Tetrado, and Beacon works with any server provider, though the steps will vary slightly with other providers. First, I'm going to create a new document. It's pretty bare here, so let's get some information off the server. This button here is the import button. I'm going to click it and choose Nitrato as my import source. I'm going to sign in. and Beacon has discovered my servers. This is the Xbox server I want to customize. I'm not going to do anything with the other two servers in this video. When I click Next, the discovery process will begin. Depending on the state of the server, this could take anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes. Since this server is new, import should only take a second or two. And here's everything Beacon was able to discover. Everything here is good to import, but most importantly, we want this server link row here. Now, when I go to the config types menu and choose servers, my Xbox server is listed right here. When I select it, Beacon will check on the status. I can also rename the server and start or stop it. Since nobody likes the default name, I'm going to rename mine now. It's arguably not a much better name. Before I go any further, I'm going to save my file so I don't have to do this again in the future. I did this with Command S or Control S on Windows, and there is a save option in the file menu. There are two more things that should be checked, difficulty and maps. Beacon imported the difficulty settings from the server, but being a fresh server, I want to make an adjustment. I'm going to set the max creature level to 180. Next, I'm going to switch to maps and make sure my server's map is selected. This is important because Beacon only shows loot drops for the selected maps. Beacon allows me to select multiple maps because it can manage multiple servers at the same time. In this case, the island is correct, so I don't need to make any changes. Though if I had made changes, Beacon does not change the map on the server. At least not yet. Now, let's get to the good stuff, editing loot. Switching the config type to loot drop contents shows me a pretty empty list. The sources list on the left is for all the loot drops I want to customize. It's empty because I haven't customized anything yet. All loot will still be default. By clicking the plus button next to the sources header, I'm presented with a list of loot drops that I can customize. This list is based on your selected maps. If something shows in this list, it means one or more of your maps makes use of it somehow. Ragnarok, in particular, uses drops for both the island and Scorched Earth. So I select Island White and hit Next. For this demo, I'm not going to use any of my presets yet. That'll come later. And there it is in the list. It's colored red because it's empty, and this little warning icon lights up. This is Beacon telling me the file isn't ready to go onto a server. In this case, I know it's because the new loot source is empty, but if I didn't know that, clicking the warning icon would tell me exactly what the problem is. Now I'm going to add an item set. An item set is a collection of engrams. It's not uncommon to put related items, like various pieces of an armor type, into a single set. I'm going to name my item set Cloth Clothing, even though the name is a bit redundant. Next, clicking this plus button here gives me a list of engrams I can add. I'm going to filter on cloth, and here's all the cloth pieces. I'm going to check off all five pieces. I only want one of each, and let's keep them all primitive. I'm going to set chance to be blueprint to 0% to guarantee immediately usable items. There's quite a few options here, but I'll come back to this in a minute. When I'm done, my list is filled with the five rows. They all have the exact same quantity, quality, and weight values. Now. Up in the settings section here, the min items and max items to arc how many of these rows to select. It's currently set to select at least one, but no more than three items. So when I loot a white drop, I might find just a shirt, or a shirt and gloves, or a shirt, gloves, and pants. Since there are five rows, if I set the min and max both of five, that means all five items will always be selected. The prevent duplicate setting makes sure the same row won't be selected more than once. With this off, even with the min and max set to five, R could select five shirts, for example. So for most item sets, it makes sense to leave this checked. 
Now, let's make some adjustments. I'm going to delete all these and start over. What I want to do now is include one spear and one piece of any cloth clothing. So first, I'm going to add a row for the spear. Next, I'm going to add a row for the cloth pieces. Just like before, I select all five. But this time, I'm going to select Merge Selections into one entry. When I'm done, it creates a single row. Since the min and max quantity is one for that row, Arc will select exactly one item. Since I have only two rows now, I can change the item set's min and max to two to guarantee that both the spear and cloth piece is chosen. Now I'm going to make things a little more interesting using the weight value. I'm going to double click to edit the spear row and add a small chance to reward a pike instead. When I find the spear in the list, there is a weight column currently set to 50. That's a fine value, so I'll leave that alone. Next, I'm going to add a pike and set its weight to 10. This means the spear is five times more likely to be chosen than the pike. Weight is relative to sibling items, so in this case, the combined weight of each is 60. The pike has a 10 in 60 chance of selection, and the spear has a 50 in 60 chance of selection. Yes, I know those fractions can be reduced, but I'm keeping it simple for the sake of the video. These weight values show up all over the place. Not only does each engram have one, but each item set row and each item set has one too. They all work exactly the same way. Now, back to the middle list here. I can add more item sets to offer some variety. This time, I'm going to add one of Beacon's built-in presets. Presets are a form of template that fill an item set based on the selected maps and destination loot source. For example, when I click and hold the plus to add small saddles to the drop, the Lamantria saddle is not included because those cannot be found on the island. Building your own presets is possible, but outside the scope of this video. So now we have a very basic and boring loot table. It's time to get that onto my server. This couldn't be simpler. I click the deploy icon up top, which looks like a rocket. Beacon confirms which servers I want to deploy to. If a server is running, Beacon will stop the server and wait for it to stop. Nitrata recommends waiting three minutes before making changes, so that is exactly what Beacon does. If the server is not running, Beacon can do its work much quicker, because it doesn't need to wait. My server isn't running, because I don't want to waste three minutes of your life. When I click begin, Beacon gets to work. Done. The server is updated. Beacon set my server name and difficulty, along with my loot drops, and I'm ready to start it. If the server was running when the deploy started, Beacon will start the server again when finished. Since it was not running, I'm going to go back to my servers list and select my server to start it. There it is restarting, all without touching the Nitrato control panel. And that's pretty much it for customizing loot, though I have a few more tips for you. See this little question mark up here? If you have questions, click it. A sidebar will open up and give you more information about what you're looking at. If you're still stuck, try the search drawer over here on the left. This will search Beacon's website. If you still need help, Beacon has a Discord server, whose link I've included in the video description. Also, it's a good idea to save your files every so often. When it's time to make changes, you can just open up your Beacon file, make changes, and deploy again. Speaking of which, I've been saving my file to Beacon's cloud. You can save to your computer instead, that's fine. I'm going to close my file now and open it again. Open the documents drawer with this button here, and you'll see Recents, Cloud, and Community. If you do not, you probably have your community access disabled. Click the menu icon here, and you'll see a link, Enable Cloud and Community. Back to the documents, since I saved to the cloud, mine is under the cloud tab. I just have to double click my file and get right back to what I was doing. So that's editing loot with Beacon. I'll be posting more videos showing off more of Beacon's features, so subscribing wouldn't be the worst idea. Anyway, I've been Tom, and good luck with your loot.